There we go. That's enough of that. Won't do that for as long because it's been uh, scheduled for a few hours. Happy lunchtime, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, I hope you're all good. Um, I'll just touch my camera. Yeah, um, still on lockdown. And I thought while well, I'm here again, it went down well. I think it was last Friday, I done one sort of lunchtime. Sit down, chill out, ask a few questions. I'm getting a lot of questions. I think while people at home, obviously, um, people are starting out trying to make money from home. So I'm getting a lot of questions. I'm trying to keep up as much as I can, like uh, Facebook, Instagram. So I thought, sort of, maybe not every Friday, but when I'm, I've sort of done my parcels, sit down for half an hour or so, let you fire your questions away. eBay, business, YouTube, wherever you want, hit up a question if I see it. I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, so, yeah, I won't leave that on the screen now. <laughs> Super Ninja is in. When was that? Quarter past ten this morning, so quite a while ago. Hopefully it's still in now. Uh, I went to say good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I just had my lunch. And it's going back on, up on me. Uh, what's this? Harry Hoffman, I was this one before I went live. He sold his very first item on eBay. Going to try and do some reselling on a much smaller scale to you as I'm at uni. Uh, or as I'm a uni student, I want some extra income. That's cool. Um, what was my first thing? I remember the first ever thing I bought on eBay. That was GoldenEye on the N64. I think I sold my original one. Oh, no, I lent out my original one. I got it back now, but I wanted it again. The very first thing I resold. I can't remember. Maybe take a screenshot. I wish I took a screenshot of my very first money making sale <laughs> as memories. But yeah, good luck with it, Harry. Hopefully it goes well. And then he follows that up with Have I ever sold golf equipment? Um I'm trying to think. The only golf clubs I've ever sold are like vintage wooden handle ones, like hickory wood, I think it's called. They go for good money. Apart from that, um, that sort of thing, golf clubs, lots of them, like with CDs, media, they're worth not much. But if you know certain types of ones, they can be good money, but you'd have to do your research and everything like that. So, yeah, good morning to everyone. Uh, how many we got in? 150 people in at lunchtime. So, welcome. And like I said, it's just a sort of chill out half hour, 45 minutes maybe, see how we get on. Just whack some questions in uh anything about business youtube life <laughs> oh before i forget hey richard payne was it this time last week i was going on about my uh tech fails or was it last monday i can't remember now we have a new ipad here we go i uh where is my old one i've got my old one here somewhere because i need to sell it for spares repairs um yeah, I had loads of people come up with suggestions and things, and I've tried everything. Um, it was like, plug it into the laptop, to iTunes, factory restore it. I've tried all that, and it was dead. So I bit the bullet. I've had that one two and a bit years anyway. I've got, what's this one? This is, I did want the new iPad Pro, the 2020, but it was like £150 more. So this is the iPad Pro 11 2018. I think that's everything. 64 gigabyte. Yeah, so... It's going good. Um, been listing the train stuff on there, and it's been getting sales. Been doing pictures on there as well. And the video I done was it I released yesterday. The video, yeah, that was edited on there, and it was a lot quicker. I could notice a big difference. It's all good. And we've got a new telly. That's the other thing. <laughs> and I fixed the fridge. Hey, so one out of three, I fixed myself. There we go. I even put the telly on the wall myself. Now that, that's quite something for me. I'm allergic to DIY normally. Well, there's loads of chat. Let's do some catching up. Um, saw some all the usual names. So welcome, everyone. I'd say a few more hellos, then we'll get on to questions again. Uh, there's a lot of questions as well, actually. Uh, we've got Reseller Kids. I've seen his name in a few times. I believe you've got a YouTube channel. I've seen you've messaged me about you're just starting YouTube and you're quite young reselling. So good luck with that. Good to start them young. Um, optical illusion. Hi, George. Long time watcher, first time talker. That's good. Yeah, if you normally watch me, like in these chats, and you watch and you don't normally say hi, just put a little thumbs up or a little smiley face. So you, 
I know you're there. You're still watching in the background. I'll see them in a minute. Um, first time talker. Just wanted to thank you for inspiring me. Give uh, to give it a try. St uh, bleh, can't talk today. Started with twenty five pounds and think my small business is worth around sixteen hundred now after three months. That's I'm going twenty five pounds three months sixteen hundred. So not like natural to me. Uh, yeah, I started well when I started full time. It was about five hundred I had to play with. But obviously that's not for everyone. And even then I had to borrow some wedding <laughs> present money, which I paid back, paid it back. Um, but yeah, you can start with anything. If you've got a full-time job now, or if you've been furloughed, or I don't know what the situation is with employed people. But yeah, start now. Even if you've got no money spare, sell your own stuff. Like I went in the loft and obviously the majority of that I bought anyway. Like there's the old laptop we had that was broken. That was 20 odd pounds. Then start with that, girls' clothes, my old clothes, shoes. Yeah, you don't need money to start small and then grow like that. Now you got 1600 or worth of um, funds to go again, hopefully when the boot sales start, probably next year now. Boo. Um, uh, it's a good question. The one and only Daz. If you're down to your last £50, what would you, your go-to items be to make a quick profit on? Uh, down to my last 50. Hmm. Uh, well, with 50 pounds, if the boot sales were on, um, you could get a lot for that. You could, I'd probably go 50 pounds. Footwear, like trainers, I do well. Um, uh, if you buy them cheap, like from general people, you can get them for like a pound, two pounds, up to five pounds. So you could buy 10 pairs of trainers maybe for five pounds, and they flip for like what, 20? To thirty pounds. Don't know. I look behind me then. Uh, just seeing what I'm spending. Yeah, roughly five pound for a decent pair. Say decent pair of Nike Air Force ones. Flip them to thirty, and they sell quick like that as well. But then things like gaming, high competition. People seem to know what retro gaming is. Uh, what else? Fifty pound. Um. I think that would be the answer, actually. Just footwear. Uh, and also, not so much now, but the, the old Cube TVs or VHS players, they're not worth as much as they used to be, but still good things you can get cheap. I just saw this one pop up about the girls. Alison, what do your girls think about my job? Oh, about your job. Um, what do they think? At the moment, while they're still young, it's still quite cool. I like it that I'm on YouTube, YouTuber, because <laughs> I I think that's all they watch now, just YouTube. Um, they do. I catch them every now and then watching my videos. They like the boots out ones, especially if I bring like Buddy, um, our dog with me. Like I bring him around every now and then. Uh, for my job, if I say like when Amy was at work, if it was school holidays, I'd take him around the charity shops. They weren't so keen on that. Uh, boot sales every now and then they like it, but most of the time they're dragging their feet. <laughs> Both all, yeah, they like it, and I'm still cool dead, just about hanging on in there. <laughs> um, I did see something I was gonna go back to because I saved it in another video or oh, I saved it in another tab. Oh, there you go, nice life it was. Uh, he bought a watch from me, uh, did pick it, and I think in the other live I done. Uh, you jumped in. He's got a YouTube channel, and I didn't manage to see the video that you're saying here about unboxing it, but I did before I went live. That's why I was a bit late, so I was trying to find it. Oops, found it. Why well, do this? I need to blow my nose. Thank you. I'm going to try and cut it open without showing my address. I've, it's a bit, I'm doing this on my phone. It's perched a bit precariously at the minute on top of about 24 screen covers and a stack of DVDs. 
Yeah, I know what you mean. When I'm filming, I have to use all sorts of things. I've actually got a proper tripod today. But on my last live, I used like a peg thing. Where is it? <laughs> trying to perch my webcam on this peg basket and it was moving about <laughs> so that's fun but yeah let's watch the rest it's always weird watching like when people tag me on instagram they're watching me on the big telly that still freaks me out <laughs> let's have a look I tried to use it the other day for my stepdaughter for doing a makeup tutorial for her, obviously not for me. Oh. And um, yeah, and it was uh, there's a bone though, so let's see what we've got here. It's well packed. Of course. She always packs his stuff well. The trusty recycled craft paper. So it's nerve wracking. There we go. Swiss City. Pride on your wrist. He's a nice little watch. watch. So yeah, thanks, mate. Well, I'd quickly show you that I am watching it. Yeah, that's really cool. It still freaks me out <laughs> when people like watch me. I see the numbers like, oh, it's got 3,000 views, this video, this many likes, this many dislikes. It's a number. And then you see people tag you in things or react. Yeah, makes it real. It's cool. Yeah, thanks again. Um, there's a couple more. I've filmed today, of course. Uh, orders going out and a couple more subscribers say i'll see i really appreciate it and glad you like it i liked that one nearly kept it almost so thanks mate and obviously he has a youtube channel this um clicked on it so night's life click on his name go over check him out got to promote the new channels and saying that starting monday if everything goes to plan i'm not sure how it's all going to work out but i'm going to try out the midweek morning show, half an hour show, so half eight till nine. That's what I'm planning with Amy. I'm going to plan it with Amy over the weekend because I want to have a structure. So sort of, it's going to be only half an hour, but on a nice structure. So, you know, get people up, give you a reason to get up in the morning. And then afterwards, hopefully you've got that sort of boost of energy to get going for the day. Because I know, especially me as well, um, this lockdown, or even before lockdown, I was a bit mental anyway, <laughs> but getting a bit down, Days are dragging into one, like blending into one. Uh, and I was thinking anyway on the YouTube channel because I can't produce the content that I do normally. I thought no one's done a morning show. There's obviously all the evening shows. So I thought morning show. Well, I, it was actually Amy that came up with it. I can't take the credit. But we're going to work on it together over the weekend, come up with some sort of structure. You have to bear with me while it's new. But while we are still in lockdown, I'll try and do Monday to Friday, half eight till nine every morning. Have a guest or two on every week as well. Sort of eBay news, not just eBay, like just making money online. So eBay, Amazon, Depop, uh, excuse me. Uh, and then if there's anything in the community, do a bit of reseller news, maybe. All loose ends I need to tie up over the weekends. So yeah, watch out for that Monday morning from half eight till nine. And then obviously, if you are not up that early, like me, then you can watch it back later and join in. We'll do some community stuff as well so maybe at the end of each episode or show um i could ask the comments or the viewers to i don't know could do a competition who knows <laughs> but yeah stay tuned to that it'll be interesting and something that hasn't been done as far as i know before so yeah tune in um <laughs> just saw this one just pop up What's that? Uh, I'm feeling supersonic. Are you finding the wife and kids under your feet a bit then, George? I know us resellers often enjoy working... Um, I can't say that word. <laughs> working by yourself. Um, uh, under my feet a bit. Yeah, uh, I do... Obviously, I like working by myself. I'm introverted anyway. 
so I'm not outgoing and I'm good working by myself. But um, yeah, Amy's starting her own reselling bit. Like she's got her, here we go. Oh, this way. That's Amy. Oh, that's Amy's section here. So she started reselling and she's doing her own business as well. She's still doing a website. And when it's all up and running, obviously I try and get her on live when we launch that. So that'd be cool. Um, the girls have been good, actually. Normally on a school holiday, it's a bit of a pain when I'm trying to do stuff and get here, there and everywhere. And I've got to take them with me. But um, yeah, they've been good, I've got to say. Um, and then I'm here Monday and Friday. So when I know I'm at home, I've got my pictures ready. So I can do a bit of that when they're working, like homeschooling. And then Amy's doing her bit and I can help Amy as well and then do the chores. We've got two dogs now keeping us occupied. So overall, it's not as bad as I thought. Like when they first shut the schools, I was like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> but it's been good. Um, here's Kevin, number one subscriber <laughs> and who bought the book. So thanks again, Kevin. Um, here's a question. Uh, what other platforms besides eBay would you men recommend to send on? Uh, obviously, the one that comes to mind straight off eBay is Amazon. Um, you can do, obviously, send it into Amazon that you can't do at the moment with lockdown. But you can sell Merchant Fulfilled, which I've been doing a couple of times. Have you seen? As you've seen. Um, I sold the Wii Fit board for 200 and they're going for about 100 new on eBay at the moment. So you can get stronger prices, but you've got to put up with Amazon's return policy. It's very lenient. And... There's lots of rules, especially if you're sending stuff into Amazon. So it's a bit of a headache, but I definitely, I'm still trying Depop. I'm being patient with that with clothes and all that sort of stuff, shoes. Um, even YouTube, try YouTube. Um, yeah, I started from zero subscribers and obviously there's loads of channels and that is another way of making sales but that I've seen recently anyway. Obviously I can't rely on it, but people are kind enough to buy off you as well so that's another income stream if you are thinking of doing videos and um, yeah start it no better time to start than now while we're all stuck and there's others like etsy but that's quite long-winded for me so i gave up on that one um yeah then the main ones obviously you can try facebook or start your own website if you can not that i've had any experience with that um <laughs> The Solace in Capitals. Where can I buy the badge? Please tell us all. The badge. I tried to show at the start before I started. This is the only one in existence right now. Super rare item, this. <laughs> um, me and Amy, again. Amy being the designer. I was going through the merch. Because um, once I got the t-shirts out, I was going to try and adapt a bit more. So I don't want people spending loads of money. So I thought a cheap and cheerful thing might be like a little pin badge. So we designed this one together, or she designed it. Obviously, there's the pineapple thing going on. Reselling in progress. But yeah, that was just like a promo, not a promo, like a, um, what's it called? A tester one. I can't remember if she, because Amy's the uh, one for the quality, like she checks it out if it's good enough. I don't think she was quite happy with this one. I don't think it was quite in centre. Yeah, like the R isn't quite, it's very particular. So these will be available. I have to get onto that as well. Um, yeah, just a fun little thing. But they're not available at the moment. It's the only one. I did have it on my hoodie, actually, before I started. But um, I was getting a bit hot. Been wrapping all morning. Been sending well. Um, uh, do you need... I just saw this one quickly. Do you need a VAT number to sell on Amazon? Anyone know? No, I'm not VAT registered yet. Um, you just need to provide your business number. Like when you sign up with HMRC, I think you get like a business number or self-employed, some sort of number. But yeah, they'll ask for it. And um, as long as you are signed up, which you should be if you're making money online, then it's all it's easy enough to do. Um, um, oh no, I've just seen it. Uh, Rainbow Island bought one of the mugs, just moved, and the handle broke off, gutted. Oh, no, I haven't got my mug with me. So I made myself a coffee as I was watching the video, and the coffee mates curdled. Oh, so this spilt coffee everywhere. <laughs> yeah, coffee mates curdled with the coffee that I made for myself this morning, so that's not good. 
yeah uh the merch is still available i think the link's in the description um it's good quality stuff actually um saying the handle's broken off um yeah i still got mine i use it <laughs> and amy's got her own t-shirt it's quite funny when she puts that on oh there we go um right let's scroll up i've missed loads of chat so if I've missed anyone's and you want a question asked, there's loads coming in. I'm trying to answer as many as I can. Um, uh, what's this one? Joshua Park. Hey, George, I'd really appreciate it if you'd check out my new eBay store and tell me how I could improve. The store is called JTP Shop. And you have two items listed as I only started last week. Uh, so without looking uh, to improve for a newbie, uh, obviously, uh, You'll need a few more listings just to go on that comment. Obviously, two items. You could sell, like, two iPhones. Obviously, they'll sell quickly. But if you're selling general stuff, like, I aim for two to three hundred. But, obviously, I aim for the higher end type thing, for average of £40 a sale. Um, and then, again, without looking, good quality photos, multiple photos as well. So you're allowed 12. Try and use 12 if you can description um don't just do a basic description say something about condition if you live in a smoke-free home put that in that always helps uh global shipping program if you're allowed um ebay gsp that's called um if you can post internationally through that um what else can i recommend um for a newbie that's probably the most important thing. Oh, title. In your title, you allow, allowed 80 characters, I think, or 100 characters. Try and use as much as you can. Use keywords. So trainers, you'd say the color, the size, in UK size, EU size, the design number on the inside of the tag, and then how high the trainer is, so mid, high, or low top trainers. Yeah. Just uh, use as much as you can of the features that eBay give you, basically. Uh, um oops closet geek do you stream yard app or online i'm on my laptop at the minute i don't think you can do it from a what's it i went to do it from my ipad but you need to be logged on to a computer like a desktop thing for it to work but i think if you join someone else's chat you can be on like a ipad or phone or something but the main person has to be on desktop uh, quite a common question, so I'll quickly answer it. What size is my storage unit? And the, this is 175 square foot, and the lights have gone off because they're on a timer. <laughs> it wouldn't be alive without the light uh, without the lights going off. 175 square foot, and the cost is about um, 320 every four weeks. Um, and that depends on where you are in the country. I'm in Essex, so near London, so I get like London prices. If you go down the road in Colchester, I know someone, um, I think his name's Peter. He's got sort of the same size for 50, 40 pound a week cheaper or a month cheaper. Um, and then you are going to get a place like here, <clears throat> a storage place. Uh, yeah, that you can haggle with them. So I've just made a sale or an offer. Uh, I got Big Yellow, which is where I am, and then there's Safe Store. Sort of fight them against each other to get the best price. A new offer. Let's have a look. Okay. Six pound fifty. Small to sale, but I think I'll accept that. Top Stevie. Listed for nine ninety nine. Offer six fifty. Accept. Is that anyone in the chat? If it was, I just accepted it. Right. Oh, there we go. Live sales. Here we go. Cooking with gas. Um, right. Uh, what do I need to? What do I need to uh, before sending internationally? I have over 150 items on my eBay shop, and I know that they'd be gone in a month if I was in. If I was international, um, what do you need to know? If you can. Um, but when I say global shipping program, I think you just simply go into your postage options and there should be global shipping program and you can tick it or in your settings, you can accept or enable drip global shipping program. And all you need to know is it's super easy and super effective. 
you basically how to explain this simply so i wanted to sell my phone and i put on a global shipping program i'd list it as i do on the uk so say 50 pounds plus three pounds postage to the uk global shipping's on ebay automatically um advertise it to their worldwide platforms and they automatically work out international postage to so say someone in um australia wanted this phone i wouldn't have to put um international price in ebay can automatically work it out from the type like it's a mobile phone so they'll get their average i don't know what they do but they've got an algorithm uh someone in australia would see it they'd see did they is that a payment i oh, sold to chaos there we go um yeah, someone in Australia would see this. Um, they would see their Australian postage uh, with import fees and charges. And then say they bought it, it would come through as a normal sale, like £50 plus the £3 postage. And then on the postage table, it'll be um, to eBay's warehouse. So you're just shipping it to the UK warehouse in yeah within the UK to eBay. And they've got like a big tracking code. So all you've got to do is put that. Um, address on the parcel it'll go to ebay and then that's you done ebay then process it and send it to australia at their cover costs that the buyer has paid for i mean that a lot more confusing i think but basically all you got to do tick the box and you list it as normal and activate gsp and then when a sale comes in you just send it to the address that's come on the order and you've opened up the world like i say um yeah this whole time cast then show quickly show another cheaper sale <laughs> uh quite a handy one a fiver for some spare tapes that i had knocking about 4.99 plus postage of course uh, my phone's been dinging all over the place here that's cool two smaller sales while alive um tam solo Hi, George. My wife and I are big fans. <clears throat> I was wondering how you deal with scammers and difficult buyers on eBay. Kind of puts me off selling things. So with scammers, I wouldn't let it put you off eBay or selling completely because it's very few and far between. Um, and you can protect yourself in ways like taking all 12 photos. Um, and with electrics, I'm on Wii's today, testing Wii's. So if I was to list this on eBay, obviously multiple angles, so I know up, down, left, right, and then electricals, take a picture of the serial number, because this will be unique to this machine. So if I sold this, sent it, they've done a switcheroo and sent me back a faulty one when this is working. Um, yeah, I've included the serial number in my listing, so I can then show eBay, they've done a switcheroo there, and then you should be protected. So that's probably the best way. Um, just describe your items like with shoes even if it's not electrical and not a serial number with shoes you've taken all 12 pictures of every angle so if they're done a switch again you can then compare the pictures with what you've received back um i'm gonna sneeze <coughs> bless me um uh, whatever scams um always pay on ebay through paypal like it is at the minute um uh yeah don't like click on dodgy paypal emails like that always scams like oh you, your accounts are blocked and stuff like that it's just being vigilant and protecting yourself so yeah multiple pictures you've got electricals take pictures of serial numbers and send things tracked as well like people if you don't send it tracked people could say they didn't receive an item and you've got nothing to fall back on that's why even if i've got a thin item uh, I did have something here, like uh, say an instruction manual, a bit of paper. It could go as a letter that won't be tracked, but I'm going to pay a bit more for a large letter because that will be scanned in and that protects you and proves that you've sent it and it's been delivered. Oh dear. Um, Rosie, on that subject, i uh, got a potential scammer of a high priced item let ebay know but they're asking me to email them directly not a chance yeah keep all messages on the ebay platform um obviously because you don't want to get your account blocked anyway um 
keep it on there. So if something did happen, eBay can refer back to all the messages, what's been said and everything. And yeah, so you don't get your account blocked. Out. Oh. I've been playing with dust again. I even took a tablet this time. Um, Ryan, ever wonder if the reselling game will soon be non-profitable? Uh, I very much doubt it um, because we're a nation of buyers. <laughs> we buy all sorts of stuff uh, with, um, what's the word? Um, disposable income. Um, so people's houses are always full of stuff and the market's always changing. So in five years time, something that isn't vintage now might be vintage in five years time and collectible. Like a good example is the CRT TVs, the big cube ones. There we go, one of these. Probably five years ago, that wasn't worth it. And now the market's changed and then the market will change again. And it's probably one of the oldest professions, buying stuff and selling it on again. So yeah, it's not going away anytime soon. And yeah, there you go. Reselling is thousands of years old. Yeah, it's like the oldest, old, the oldest profession you can get really. Hustling. Um, yeah, loads of people in. Thanks for joining me today. I'm never sure if lunchtime's a good time for um, going live. Before one o'clock, have lunch. People just having lunch or just finished, have a little chill out before we crack on again. Like I said, I've got all these. I'm on Wii's today. Got a nice set of six here. Got some games. So that's me this afternoon. Ooh. And and I've got a video to edit because um, I had a good lot of sales this week. A really strong set of sales, all thanks to the train haul. So look out for that. Probably tomorrow or what day are we on? Friday. Yeah, tomorrow or Sunday I'll release that one. And then it'll be Monday again. <laughs> uh Ah, here we go. Mr. K. Um, hi, George. In normal times, obviously, uh, if you ever go away to other towns in the UK, are you tempted to go in charity shops or seek out car boot sales, or are you banned? <laughs> Katie. Uh, hi, Katie. Um, I did get your email, actually, about my video ideas. Um, I was meant to reply to that, and I forgot. But I have seen it, and I appreciate that. I've been nicking some of them ideas. Um, and I... I laughed while reading that because me and Amy went to Brighton. Um, was it last year? Last year or the year before? No, it wasn't last year. It was the year before. Um, Amy, for like a sort of birthday treat, I've always wanted to go to Brighton. It's quite quirky there, like cool vintage shops and stuff. So we went for the weekend purely for going around all the charity shops. <laughs> so that was cool. Um yeah, there's loads. There's so many charity shops in a uh, high street that I sort of gave up. I was like tired of <laughs> charity shops and uh, all the vintage cool shops. I've got, got some stuff there. Um, so yes, is the answer. If we go anywhere different, like my skydive that got cancelled, we found two different towns right around their charity shops. Uh, went to Centre Parks. That's in Norfolk or Suffolk. I mean, um, like stayed in a hotel nearby. Checked out the charity shops. And then we went on holiday with like the mother-in-law and everyone. That was in that was in Norfolk. I think we went to Dis. I don't know if anyone's from Dis. We went to them charity shops just because it was nearby. So yeah, if we go somewhere different, I'm checking it out straight away. <laughs> and we found a car boot sale on the way back home, actually. Um <laughs> Craig, how do I get my girlfriend to enjoy to enjoy coming to charity shops with me? So I'm guessing she does come with you, but she's dragging her feet. <laughs> um, believe it or not, I used to hate, I wouldn't be seen dead in a charity shop when I first met Amy. Uh, she was the one that sort of introduced me to charity shops and I'd just stand there like I'm in a granny shop. What am I doing in here? Hope no one sees me. Um, but yeah, this was when I was whew, 15. So yeah, a long time ago. Um, 26 now. No, I'm not. 26. I'm 29 now. Sorry. Where did I get that from? I lost three years then. Um, but now, yeah, i got to go in every charity shop like a magnet. And how could you get her to enjoy it? I'm sure if she comes with you enough, get go through the women's clothing or the shoes. I'm not trying to be sexist. 
or whatever she likes <laughs> if she finds a good bargain uh, i'm sure that's what started me like i found something really cool like, probably like a piece of clothing or a game like a board game like a vintage one and then that sort of sparked my interest there so if not that then you could save money on clothes and things that might start enjoying it that way and if all that fails then she has to get used to it <laughs> Not else what I'm not sure what else to uh, suggest then. Uh, uh, it's me again. Going off message, I read that afterwards. Uh Gavin, if the wife if the wife starts make if the wife starts to take more money than you, would you double down with her and do less of your own, or would you be compelled to beat her? We're both very competitive and we would be competing with each other. Uh, obviously would help each other as well but um if she makes more money than me then that's good for me because <laughs> i married her and we live together um but yeah she started uh, when did she start she's in a i say she's in her third month but this is her first proper full month full time because she um finished her job first of april so april has been her first sort of full time thing and she's been doing like the housework and the girls schooling as well which has been hard but she's doing good she's made a good sale today actually uh yeah and if she did start to make more than me then i'd my competitive side would come out again we would be fighting each other which would be, would be a good thing but as for now i'm i'm the uh i'm the owner here <laughs> until she says otherwise um how long have we been on it's already been 37 minutes do another five or ten minutes <clears throat> then i've got to get back to work funny enough um uh her site isn't ready yet so it's not live but um when it is already she's aiming to have a launch uh date of the first of june so the rest of this month in may is it yeah first of may today um first of june she's hoping to go live so hopefully at the end of this month or the first of june i'll get her on my channel and we'll launch um i think while she's growing her ebay store she asked if um i wouldn't share it for now just so she could grow it and that and then launch them together sort of thing but yeah well she might not want to share her ebay store obviously if she doesn't want too much attention to it i'm sure she will <laughs> but yeah first of june is her proper website for like the new plastic free stuff uh, I just saw this one because this is related to me as well, and I've noticed it. Uh, John's getting loads of Instagram ads for bulk vintage clothing. Have you ever ventured into getting one of those, one of those, <laughs> one of the sacks of clothing? Yeah, whenever I'm on Instagram, I always seem to see a sponsored post for like vintage bulk buying. Um, and when I go to vintage pre love kilo sales, that's pretty much what that is. But I'm hand picking it. Uh, I've nearly done that sort of thing like bulk vintage like in a big bale but um clothing while we're in lockdown isn't a, isn't the best market because people aren't going to get dressed up to go nowhere and that's been relevant with like um i think it was very or boho boohoo boho one of them said they've had obviously a big decrease in sales obviously in clothing but then there's been an increase in like leisure wear smart tops like when people are on conference calls and stuff so i was tempted before but i said no because <laughs> i'd want to pick it out myself and that's why i go to the pre-loved kilo sales it's because i can pick it out then i pay a little bit more but i'm pretty sure it would be worth it because like vintage shops and that that's how they buy their stock so yeah worth a go but i haven't actually bought a bale myself to compare <sighs> I'm tired now. Yen Tello, uh, what's the one thing you're still looking for? Either be car boot, charity shop, Facebook. Love the new big yellow man shed. <laughs> uh, what's the one thing you're still looking for? Uh, either be car boot, charity, Facebook. One thing I'm still looking for, like item wise, good stuff that makes a lot of money. <laughs> I don't really have a specific thing. Um, I think that's what the question is. I can't quite make it out properly. One thing I'm still looking for is just uh, probably the one number one thing I'm looking for is like vintage electronics, like 
hi-fi equipment, speakers, amplifiers, uh, DVD to VHS players. Yeah, these things. There's still good money in these. Competition's high. Uh, but yeah, I like my electronics and then trainers, football boots as well. Pro football boots first, actually, because they're smaller and not as much of a pain in the bum. And they don't explode if you've got a faulty one. <laughs> um, da -da -da. Sorry, I'm just seeing all... There's so many questions. <laughs> I'm getting loads. I uh, answered that one. Um, settings. Uh, oh, yeah, Dean. Uh, Champs of Tomorrow message me about the blue Nintendo. Yeah, um, I mean to reply to you, Dean. So I'll try to remember after this. So, yeah, thanks again for that one. Uh, yeah, I'll message you after this one. Um, I answered that one. Amy's should be, yeah, end of this month, end of May, start of June uh today's haul if items aren't selling do you end the listing manually and relist does this have any negative effect on your ebay account cheers uh if you uh if items aren't selling do it yeah um if it's a really sticky item i go into it end listing yeah manually it doesn't have any effect um as long as you're not selling outside of ebay of course yeah i'll just go in end listing um, I don't relist, I do sell similar, so it's like a complete, like, if you relist, it'll be sort of connected, I think, anyway, to that listing, but sell similar, I'm hoping it'll take it away from that listing that didn't sell, tweak the photos, tweak the title, yeah, just tweak everything, and then hopefully that should do it, but yeah, there's no negative things, as far as I know, sell similar is better, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a tinfoil hat, but like I see relist as you're just listing that same thing. For a sale similar, it's mirroring, but it's a different thing. But that could have absolutely no re absolutely no relevance at all. <sighs> Nights left. Um, bought brand new box golf shoes yesterday. Worth sixty pound for ten pound. Adidas, they're a good buy. Yeah, they should. I uh, uh, I think. Because obviously Boris Johnson's going to be drawing up plans for getting out of lockdown. So I don't know if golf um, clubs will be open again. Because obviously they're out in the open. You're not near people. So that might be a good sale if golf clubs are open again. But even if even for a tenner, brand new Adidas, you're still going to sell them nicely. Um, yeah, uh, hello. We'll do a couple more. I've got blue and runny nose again. Andrew, um, hi George, thanks for all the videos, always very funny and informative, <laughs> um, hope you have a good weekend, thanks Andrew, um, very funny, uh, I try and be funny, <laughs> I end up laughing at my own jokes and that though, but yeah, glad you like watching, um, Silvercrest, made some good sales from Silvercrest items at Lidl lately, what's Silvercrest, um, we're Aldi shoppers, uh, me and Amy, so I'm not sure on the Lidl names, but you can buy R8. I bought something from Lidl, actually, don't in a lie. In their clearance section, like the middle, Lidl in the middle, <laughs> there's like an American football for like a fiver or a tenner. Sold that for 24, 25. So wherever I am in any shop, I'm trying to find R8. Might as well while I'm buying shopping. Um, da -da -da -da. Richards just said, sell similar gives it a new item number and as good as listing a new item, uh, change keywords and maybe lead photos or retake. Yeah, so I'm sort of right. Yeah, instead of relisting, yeah, you get you get a new number and then like with the tweaking, so it's not identical. So yeah, it's just all about tweaking, get a new fresh listing and hopefully that'll boost it up the search rankings and then get you that sale. Uh, I just saw the word car boots and this one had to be flicked on. Um, who's that? Oh, yeah, footsteps. They're gone. Uh, on a scale of one to ten, how much are you missing car boots and charity shops? Oh, God. Lots. Um, oh, are you surprisingly pleased? I'm not pleased <laughs> with how you're getting on without them. On a scale of one to ten, it's off the scale. 
um i can't think about it too much when i wake up on a sunday like and especially if you look outside blue skies sun ah oh, it gets me down gets me down um so yeah one out of ten a thousand missing car boots and charity shops charity shops not so much i was getting a bit tired of them throughout the winter but if they are open again hopefully from next week then i'll be hitting them of course their boot sales oh i miss them and i'm surprisingly not pleased with how i'm getting on it's obviously um put out a shout out for stock from subscribers and that's what's been paying dividends like this is from a subscriber from bran so thanks bran if you are watching um yeah and then i got all that train haul from andrew uh, a couple of other deals i can't remember names now um i think it was jack my first haul i done so yeah i've yeah oh, it's time back again go away leave me alone <laughs> So I've been surprised with how I've not coped, and especially if I didn't have this YouTube channel, I'd been in a bit of a pickle. It would be a lot harder anyway, like finding RA, finding deals on eBay. But then I've been surprised with people's kindness, really. So obviously I've been doing deals like um, like the train hall, obviously paid money to sell, and then this one paid money. I've had a couple of people like donate stuff to me, which has been like extremely kind. I'm always willing to pay for the right of stuff. But um, yeah, I've had a couple of people send me stuff for no cost at all, which has been amazing. So that's surprised me. But yeah, missing them. And yeah, I sort of changed my mindset for in the future. Like I need a bit of a backlog just in case something like this happens again. Uh, or even throughout the winter. Obviously, winters are long with no boot sales anyway. Right, 47 minutes. I'll do one more question and then... I'm going to call it a video. So I've got stuff to do. What, um, I'll do two more, actually. Um, Brian, uh, what gave you the confidence to move from a full-time... Sorry, I <laughs> just don't call my eye. Uh, what gave you the confidence to move from a full-time... Oh, my God, I can't read. What gave you the confidence to move from a full... From a job <laughs> to full-time email? I'm, I'm interested to do the same. Please answer because I just need the confidence. Uh, so I didn't go from a job straight to eBay. I went from a job to being a housewife, house husband, uh, doing the kids stuff, doing the house stuff. That's when I started dabbling with eBay and then I made the jump full time. I didn't have a job already and the kids had started full time school. Um, going from job to eBay, that would be a different thing. And I'd probably say make the jump as soon as your normal job's getting in the way of your reselling, like your reselling's been held back by your job. And if you've been doing it for a few months or a year or so, that should give you the confidence that, right, I've seen a whole year or so. I know I can do this. And then, yeah, pull the trigger then. But even then, I didn't even have a job to worry about. And um, Amy gave me the boost again. She believed in me and she pushed me, signed me up, and off I went. So, yeah, I'm not the one to ask for self-confidence because that's not my strong point, personally. But, yeah, if you can look back on sales, you've been doing really good, performing strong, growing and growing, yeah, then that's when you should make the switch. Right. Um, last question. Let's make it a good one. Um, there we go. Nothing reselling related. We'll finish with this one. Graham. Apart from football, you into any other sport? What's best sport items to sell that surprised you? So, see, as you know, like my football Arsenal supporter and Southend United, I had a Southend United season ticket for a few years. Um, I used to play basketball um, for Southend for a little while, or well, for a few years when I was younger. Uh, could have played for Essex, but I didn't do that step up. Um, I didn't want to do the travelling. So yeah, basketball. I don't watch it as much now. I still enjoy the. I still enjoy playing it. Football, basketball, cricket. Played a bit of cricket at school. Didn't play for a team, just a school team. Uh, don't watch that as much anymore. Don't really do much anymore. In it. Anyway, now I'm doing reselling on YouTube. I used to like enjoying. I used to like watching cricket. Enjoyed playing it with friends and for the school. Uh, badminton. I like badminton. But didn't play for a team or anything. Just enjoyed playing it. Yeah, I was Mr. Sport growing up <laughs> until we had kids, obviously. 
I'd be open to any sport. Um, what else? In fact, actually, last year, um, Amy's uh, work team had a netball tournament. I never played netball, but I joined in with that. They needed an extra pair of hands. High scorer, of course I was. There was a competitive edge coming out. Yeah, I'm open to any sport, really. Um, yeah, there we go. I think that would be it for now. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Take care. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for joining me. I got through quite a lot of questions. I think I did anyway. Uh, answered a lot. Uh, and then there's one more here uh, from today's hall. What net profit do you aim for or achieve over an average year? Thanks for all the help you give. Um, obviously, I won't put out the exact number that I sort of need or want, but basically that depends on everyone's situation. So, for example, I need, well, I need different now to what I needed a few months ago before Christmas. Because <laughs> obviously Amy was the full-time owner. She was on a very good wage. But now she's starting her own business. So obviously income starting from the bottom and I'm now the main income earner. So everything's changed and then someone might. So off the top of my head, Nick and Andrea, if you watch their channel, I'm sure you do. Obviously they've got their mortgage. They're many, many years into their reselling business. They can, they want to take it back easier so they don't have that or not as much pressure as like someone like I would, for example, then someone might be living at home still, or you might have a mortgage or rent. You might have one kid, no kids, five kids. So, yeah, um, you might have expensive tastes, like the iPads might die, your telly might fall off and crash. <laughs> so I'd say, uh, yeah, just work out your expenses, what you'd need to live comfortably. And there's your number, really, you need to aim for. Um, Obviously, I'd like to own my own home one day, um, so I'm pushing it hard anyway. If I already had a mortgage and that, I wouldn't be wanting to strive to be like a millionaire or anything like this time next year, Rodney. I'm not really like that, even though that would be nice. But um, as long as we're comfortable, no debt, nice car, nice house, happy family, that's all you can ask for, really. And on that note, I'm going to call it a day. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Look out for the video on the weekend. I'm going to be editing on my new iPad. <laughs> and yeah, stay safe. Hope sales go well. Um, look after each other. And I'll see you probably Monday. See you later, everyone.